We first met up with Freya in Tonga, and we wanted to do a video about the Irwin 52 because we also considered an Irwin 52. There were over 250 Irwin 52s built. They were designed and built by Ted Irwin, and he seemed like the American version of Henry Amell. We lost Ted in 2015, but his boats live on. We're here at Freya, and uh, we're going to be invited on soon, I hope, to give you a tour of an Irwin 52. Can I come aboard, Captain? Yeah, welcome aboard. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, Captain Lewis here on Freya. You sure it's Captain Lewis? Yes. Hey, are you the captain? Yeah, Ron Rico. Call me Captain Ron, boss. Now I just want the watchers to know that I'm not the first one to make the connection between Captain Ron and Captain Lewis. It's rather interesting, the similarities. Oh my god. Every time I'm up this way, she, uh, well, she wants my manhood, you know, it's just... All right, well, I think let's start on the deck because co-captain uh, Jules is kind of busy right She's now. She's kind of busy with paperwork that we have to do to depart New Zealand in the next three or four days. Okay, cool. All right. So maybe we can start at the front of the boat, work our way back, and talk about, you know, what's important on a cruising vessel from the captain's viewpoint. Uh, this particular boat has four sails on it. She's a catch rig with a storm sail, Genoa, main, and a mizzen. So uh, all the lines are here coming back. This is our windlass. Electric windlass, both Genoa and Staysail come back on each side of the for the roller floating line. Uh, we have an open, very open deck with high high gunnels, so much safer. We have high lifelines from forward to back. When we're making a sailing ocean, blue ocean water passage, we attach our safety lines from this cleat all the way back to the aft cleat. So when we're underway, we always wear a harness with a tether, and we tether off. So in case we're in, in, we're in inclement weather, if you were to fall over or whatever, you're still with the boat, which is very important. So on your, uh, on your life lines and everything, do you wear your life jackets on the inside of the cockpit as well, all the time? Uh, no. Uh, if it's in calm weather, and we're just uh, really relaxed, good sailing, then we're pretty casual. But if we leave the cockpit at any time, we come out with a harness on. Is there anything else on the deck that you'd like to talk about that, you know, for open water crossings or, you know, you know, doing what we do all the time? Well, what's important? Well, what's important is to uh, have a safe, sail when you're underway. Um, tie your anchors off to where when you're underway in blue water. You don't on a you want you don't want your anchor to fall off and if you haven't checked all your uh, anchor chains and stuff. I've heard of boats that their anchor just falls off or it comes off the windlass, goes down and starts beating your boat. So yeah, always tie your anchor off. And uh, 
always keep your lines really in good shape as far as uh, where they're stowed off the deck. You don't want them laying on your deck. Number one, it gets them dirty. They, they get tangled. But so you want to always keep your lines for your halyards or whatever, your spinnaker line, all squared away. Everything should always be tied down when you get in the way. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so you've got some... You've got some extra fuel on your deck. Tell us about that. Well, in my last, well, the last three or four years on this particular boat, we've never carried jury cans because we carry 1,200 liters of fuel in solid tanks. But after Fiji, we'll be heading up to the Marshall Islands and a few islands that may or may not have uh, access to a marina or a dock for us to access fuel. So we're prepared to, if we have to get some fuel for the boat, we have 10 jerry cans, and we have a board made to bolt to the stanchions, and then those five cans, and those five cans will be secured full of diesel. So we're always able to go get diesel if we need to. So Aquarius is right behind you. Yep. And one of the things that we, we budgeted for before we started was, you know, we thought we were going to be burning about $100 worth of fuel a month. We haven't even come close to that. Yeah. Did you find the same? Um, no, we we use a lot more than a hundred dollars a month because uh, we we like to live in comfort. It's our home. We have uh, air conditioning we don't always use, but we have a big water maker that runs off our generator, so we make uh, 240 liters an hour of water. We carry um, about 1,200 liters of water, but after every passage, we totally wash the boat with water maker water, which a lot of people do not do. But uh, normally on our any on our boat, we've never liked to have anything on deck. So when we're sailing, our deck was always clear. So this will be the first time that we're gonna have something on deck when we're underway. But we feel confident that if they're tied down properly, it'll be okay. Cool. Now if you'll notice on our Bimini and Dodger, you can't see in, you can't see out. When we're stopped at anchor, or the few times we go to a marina, uh, we cover that up. It keeps the sun out, keeps the cop cockpit cool. When we're sailing, all those canvases come off. And in this particular uh, arrangement, we have a 360 view with our in our cockpit, and it's totally enclosed. So we're always dry and very comfortable. And even in the most inclement weather, we just sometimes we do our watches in our pajamas. Well, here we are. You can see our schedule here, where we're at coming into San Cristobal. J6 at sea, Commodore Bojangles. We've caught 25 fish so far. They've been delicious. So can you tell me about your your setup on your main? I, I, yeah. I've never seen it like that. Well, uh, a lot of people haven't. Some of the Irwins came with a different, but I think most of them came, come in this. And in fact, we've just uh, replaced two of the um, blocks here on this system. And then we've added and replaced three of the back ones. These are really nice uh, German blocks that we found a dealer here in New Zealand. So far, we've replaced uh, seven blocks to make sure that everything, all the pulley system works very good. And uh, yeah, it's a seven to one ratio. So uh, it's not really hard to pull in. We still use the winch to pull it in, but it's uh, really slow coming in. It's, it's got a lot of, a lot of uh, push pressure there when you're under sail. But we have an in bass purling. Uh, and, uh, so we have uh, the bass out. Everything is operated from the cockpit. Pulling the mast, the mainsail out, 
pulling Genoa out, pulling the st st staysail out, and even the uh, mizzen. So it's all totally operated from the from the cockpit. Yeah, it's the same with our mount. And yeah. that's yep. it's a nice way to be. We have uh, all manual winches. There's nothing electric on this particular boat, although we just purchased a new piece of equipment and it's called a winch right. Now those of you, if you don't have electric winches and you have manual, I highly recommend the winch right. It's an electric winch handle with a lithium battery and it helps you to go up the mast. Uh, Jules tried to get me up the mast a couple times. I'm kind of big guy, so it took her about an hour. But now we have the winch right. Shoot you straight up the mast. You can use them for these huge uh, winches that we have. We have really big uh, 55 uh, winches. So they're, it's a pretty big size. Again, here's our enclosure. So all of it is totally enclosed. You can open it up on every panel, except for the uh, two sides of the front. We always have a, a good good air service air, air uh, We also have three solar panels that help us during the day. It doesn't, they don't charge a lot, but they help because uh, we've got a 1,350 amp hour bank batteries. And I think it's 1,110 uh, amp batteries, gel type batteries. And we have the three solar panels. And we have a nice uh, dinghy davit here in the back, stainless steel, which carries our uh, dinghy with chaps. And once we leave to go offshore, we have stainless steel uh, straps, not the straps, but the, the gadget is the stainless steel. And we strap this way three times so the boat can't go back and forth sideways. And then we take one line from uh, the back of the dinghy up to here to, on the edge of board, balance covered. And also, as a safety precaution, we hook chains, two in the back and one in the front. So, if hap happens that the block system breaks, the chains are going to still hold that dinghy up. So, something I learned, and uh, I've never had that before, but it's, and I've never had to use them. I mean, I use them all the time, but the, the lines have never broke, but if it does, the lines, let's get the, the dinghy's there. Also, when we're on a passage, we on long passes, we always take the motor off and we secure it to the side rail. So that way, uh, and we would never really use this as a as a life raft because we have a life raft. We have a six-man offshore life raft, which I uh, highly recommend to have on board and when you're doing your cruising. Uh, these are the lines for the mizzen. So it's all going to be done right here in the cockpit. Uh, we have uh, more of our safety equipment. We have two uh, throwable. We have a horseshoe and a ring with an overboard light. That's for safety. Up forward on the port, we have the six-man life raft. We have a life sling available as well. So if you're out in the water and you're unconscious or you need to be hoisted up or you're injured, you use the life sling. Now at anchor, we have the solar lights that we help to light up the boat. So when we're off uh, doing something, we come back at night, we kind of recognize our boat, and it also lights the boat up a bit more so other people don't hit us. Because it does happen. Yeah, so, we actually lost our boat one time in a big anchorage. Yeah. Sometimes it gets kind of it, it, it tell you, it gets, uh, when you see, when you're coming back to an anchorage and you have 60 boats, and you're like, wow. And they're all have the same type of anchor light. Some people add little green lights on the back just to sec, you know, segregate that. But we do these uh, lights and they're really nice. They're, they're uh, solar lights. I will go forward here. Oh, and we have um, adjustable backstays on the mizzen, adjustable backstays on the main mast. Um, there's our life raft that we keep on board. We have... Uh, on the rigging, on this particular rigging, we have a hydraulic backstage, we have a hydraulic boom bang, and a hydraulic topping lift. I mean, not topping lift, but um, uh, what's the line of what you call it? What you call it? All right, <laughs> come on in. Uh, oh man, this is our cockpit, and because we're getting to get it again the way, we're doing our last minute 
washing. Oh I'm just eating Jules, lunch. there's Jules. You know what I, I like about this cockpit? Very, It's kind of similar to what, what we have on Aquarius. Is you can lay down on this and you can sleep up here if you wanted to. Yeah. You can keep an eye on everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I, I really like that about both Aquarius and Freya. Yeah. You can just like, you just like put a pillow here. Yeah. Just sleep up here. It's you really got, comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And you get all the view and you guys, you guys have a, such an open cockpit. It's so well, much more open. the than, front is not covered. Yeah. It's all and, and you can like look out and you can have, yeah. see everything. I really like that. Well, when we're underway, if I'm not on watch and I don't feel like going down below to take a nap, I sleep right here. It's a little, it depends on which tack, but either that side or this side. We had new cushions made for it. And um, this is our helm station area. And um, on this particular boat, we have a we have an autopilot, we have a depth sounder, a uh, GPS, an AIS, and a compass. So we don't have a lot of fancy stuff, but we have the essentials, which I believe is the AIS, a radar. I, I like to have them both. Depth sounder when you're coming into areas that are shallow or not, and your autopilot. Uh, when we left Panama last year. We didn't want to take a chance on our autopilot going out and having to steer 4,000 miles. So we purchased a spare autopilot, plug and play, exact same thing that we have on board. And thankfully we haven't had to change that out yet. So that's a good thing. Uh, we have this little box that keeps some of our stuff that we need in a cockpit for just like uh, the headlamps or, or so forth. And these are all the leads for the uh, sails up forward. That's the um, main sheet. So it comes through the, the door there. Uh, we have two windows here for us to see the sails, either during the day or during the night, so you can actually see how your sails are doing. And uh, our boat hook, we keep handy when we're, when we're coming in. We'll put that away for this passage. And uh, yeah, so how about we go below? All right, let's do it. Yeah. We're doing last minute things for the preparations for our journey, which will be departing probably Monday. Today is Wednesday, so the following Monday. And this is our this is our home and our transport and our lifestyle, which is great. <laughs> I'm just the secretary today. I'm doing all the boring maintenance stuff, you know, emailing, copying, sheets of paper, all the things you need to do. Come on, Jules, you never are boring. Uh, this is true. Maybe I'm not boring, um, but no this is the paperwork that's necessary to actually leave a country and then arrive in another country. Very different than hopping on a plane. But you learn a lot because you have to learn that to to do this or fill in all this paperwork, you sort of have to know the answers to everything. What color is your hull, how deep it is, how long it is, what the sails are. They ask you all sorts of crazy questions, not crazy, important questions, <laughs> that you're supposed to know. So actually what I do is I keep all the information on what's called a, a sheet, one sheet, which will have, I use it as a cruise sheet. So when I go into a country, if they ask anything at all, I can answer them on the spot. So that's my role, other than in the galley. Then cool. I'm the, then I'm the cooking queen. <laughs> but I, I like the one you did said last night about which was he does all the maintenance and you do all the cleaning. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think you've seen that. <laughs> Anyways, one of the first things that I notice about this cabin is the size. Fifteen six width. Oh, that, well, six, fifteen feet six inches is the well, breadth. Is, yeah. I yep. just love how wide it is, how open it is. You know, you can, if I sit down over here, I don't have to be very close to you guys. That's right. I can keep my distance. This is really nice. And actually, if people are concerned about, some people say, oh, but what happens when you're underway? Do you fall and everything? These two grab rails Some, up here, some people do the pole dancing. They, <laughs> do you pole dance? Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> tried. So we have... The only person that's pole danced recently was uh, an eight year old. Yeah. And he loved it. Yeah. But me, no. <laughs> so these boats are really well equipped with the uh, grab rails, handles, not for doing chin ups, but it really, because this boat is a wide boat, you can't reach on one side or the other at the same time. So 
We all, I always use them. Everybody uses these handrails when we're underway. It's very safe. What's the most important thing that you have on the boat that you use every day that most people don't know about? I have an iPad with my favorite chef's videos on it, which I watch, or something else that I watch up there, and a cup of Roy Boss tea. That's probably That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so an iPad with a bunch of things to watch on it. A bunch of things to watch on it. I particularly love to cook, so it's usually um, chefs who do videos and stuff. And the rest is my rooibos tea. I love rooibos tea. It's non-caffeine tea in, from South Africa. And I usually have that with honey in a mug. And All right, what about you, Captain Ron? Oh, man, I gotta, I, I, I'd like to keep continuing to use my thongs, but I'm kind of <laughs> up in the age now and a little bit... Uh, disproportionate so I don't really wear my thongs anymore but in my earlier years I'd say the first uh, eight to ten years of full-time cruising when I went out sailing and just enjoying life I was always wearing my thong because it's less to wash so it used to be a thong was the most important thing that's right, that's right. It was my most but what about now oh well now the most important thing is my wife on this boat which I must say, they, they just got married. Yes, we met uh, in Fiji in 2007, and we've sailed for uh, right at 11 years together. And as of January the 4th in 2019, we, we got married in Russell in a nice little small Maori church, and it was just wonderful. So now we're actually married, so that's great. Yeah, we, we got married barefooted but with lots of pearls. Yep. It was fantastic. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the rest. Starting in the forward cabin, we have um, a split V-bird. This has a panel that goes in, makes it a nice bed. Three drawers on each side, two uh, cabinets for store for uh, hanging lockers. Um, every every uh, cabin has a hatch, and a fan and an air conditioning vent. We don't always use the air conditioning, but it's nice in a hot day in, in a marina if we ever stop. So uh, anyway, we have uh, lots of storage here. And uh, this is the V-Bird. Oh, we have another small hatch here. It's very spacious yachts. So it's very spacious cabins. And then we have a shared bed um, for general use for anybody that needs to use it. The forward cabin does not have its own head, but you know, we have a spacious head. And oh, there we go. And the mural kind of helps you along the way when you're. Where's it? Where's the shower? Well, the shower yeah. normally comes out of that sink, but we've taken it out. So on this shower, on this head, and our other guest head, we took the showers out because when people, when you, when we shower them, you, it's. We just don't want to keep wiping it down. So anybody that's a guest on our boat, uh, either showers on the back deck when it's great in the sunshine, but normally they use our walk-in shower, and we'll show you that. All right, so, cool. Uh, it just helps keep the boat clean and organized and not so... Uh, Let's uh, turn on some lights in here. Yeah, let me turn some lights on. So uh, we, uh, we recently had a new mattress made for this particular uh, cabin, and we've added the uh, a new uh, leaf cloth. This keeps you from falling overboard. Lots of drawers. Um, this is our another head in here. We've changed all of our heads from manual to electric. Are they fresh water? Yeah. Nope, salt water. We can change them to fresh water, but I don't. But I could change them to fresh water. It's, it's got the valve, but we just prefer to use the salt water for that. Um, all right, you take the camera. Yeah, all right. Let me try out your bit. Yeah, there you go. <sighs> I love this bed. It's you know what? I I always love firm beds, and this is nice and firm <laughs> and perfect. Yep. I could be very comfortable in that bed. All right. Now, the one thing we did when we installed our water maker is right down below here. Normally you would have three drawers, but this is where our water maker is installed. It's a manual plus automatic water maker. So we uh, have this electrical part here. We manually bring it up to 700 PSI. 
And behind this, in another section underneath the bed, is the pump and the um, Membrane. membranes. So we have two large membranes in this particular unit, which was the largest unit we could fit in this area, is the 62 gallon. We tried for a 90 gallon, but it, they could not fit it physically in this position. So, so what what do you think about um, carrying extra membranes? Um, I don't personally think it's great because they don't have a shelf life. It's just being in storage. The main thing you want to do is not run your water maker in a marina or around any kind of fuel or stay away from uh, chlorine bleach. So in the five years that we've owned this boat, we've only taken city water on once, and that was in New Zealand. But other than that, we've only had water maker water on this boat. That's all we've ever used on this boat since we bought it. Pure water maker water. Uh, here's Jewel's special area. Now we'll turn the light on so you can have a gander. We just had lunch, so some of the dishes haven't been done. But uh, we have a nice uh, Force 10 stove, free burner. Lots of storage here. Lots of storage here, here, here. Um, drawers. This is our stand-up refrigerator. Freezer. Really nice. Uh, under passes, though, it sometimes can be a bit touchy when if you're uh, doing this, which we don't hardly do, but uh, if it's really healing over, which we try not to do, everything's good. But anyway, it's a nice little stand up fridge freezer. Maybe we make our ice, keep our stuff frozen. Under here, well, normally you would think there was an engine there, but there's not. This is just storage. So we have storage for cleaning supplies, so forth, in this side of it. And inside there, there's the compressor for the deep freeze. And on this side of that same uh, island, this is all storage compartment drawers for tools and so forth. And to here, we have uh, lots of tools and spare parts, electrical, inverters, all the batteries. We have batteries here and here on the floor and three behind the um, starboard bed. This is actually for a washing machine, but we don't have one, but it access is either through here or there's a top hole. So we keep all of our luggage. traveling luggage in there. Uh, this is actually a crew bed, but the first year we bought the boat, we realized we're not going to have that many people on the boat. So we took the mattress off and now this is never here. But it's only because we're working on the boat, but everything gets stowed. But uh, normally this is all cleared off. It's your workbench. Huh? It's your workbench. It's, it's my workbench. So <laughs> uh, I do things here and get things. And then when we're underway, all this is cleared away. Um, and then part of that is this nice deep freeze that we have. So it goes down to whole, all the way down to here. It's a uh, generator driven freezer. And uh, we run the generator twice a day to keep the freezer and it stays cold. We carry a lot of our fruits and vegetables in these baskets, which is really nice. It keeps them, keeps the air through them so they don't rot. Like this will be totally full of fruits and vegetables. Um, when you come back in here further, we just did all the laundry getting ready. So this is all the laundry. We have a walk around bed, uh, lots of storage on both sides, flat screen TV if we want to watch a movie, uh, more storage here. I mean, uh, this is our home, so everything. And this is our aft head, which everybody gets to use that shower. So you can sit down in the shower and um, underway, be comfortable and safe. You don't get thrown around. And it's so much easier to keep this big shower clean. So uh, we allow our people that sail with us, which happens quite often, uh, to use it's like it's our home. It's their home. So anybody that comes on usually becomes our friend for life. So, yeah. And this is for pole dancing too? No, but this does hold our mizzen mast up. <laughs> so, yeah. A lot. Look, when I started sailing, I was scared. Join us in part two for an in depth interview with Jules and Lewis. Like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe that really helps us and if you want to watch more of us click one of those